Hey everyone, alright, we'll be starting in about uh, 10 or 15 minutes here, um, but if you're hanging out, um, just uh, listen along to this music, and uh, we'll get going shortly. We're going to be talking about oud makers, and I'm going to be uh, discussing um, some ouds on the internet, my impressions of them. I'll be sharing my screen, we'll be looking at some ouds together, we'll be looking at some, listening to some oud sounds together, um, and I'll be giving my impression of it. And of course, as usual, I'll be sharing with you my top recommended ouds uh, that you can buy, especially for beginners and, um, and for professionals alike. Um, but we'll be discussing all this shortly.
All right, let's get started. Hope you can hear me well. Okay, so we're going to talk about oud makers. All right, and so what you're going to hear are a rundown of a few oud makers um, that came to my mind today. Um, also from my oud, ultimate oud buyers guide, um, some of the oud players uh, or oud makers that I um, I'm interested in myself personally. Um, and, uh, you know, if you guys have any suggestions of wood makers that you want to hear, um, put them in the comments and, um, you know, we can, I might be able to search those up, but I have a few, um, ready here that I want to talk about. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we'll get started talking about wood makers, the type of wood that are out there and all that kind of thing. So the first thing first, let's get started. Okay. All righty. So first things first, I want to talk about, um, you know, lower end, entry level, factory made uh, ouds. So there's a lot of ouds out there that you can find um, anywhere from $200 to $1,000. This is the $200 to $1,000 range. This will be entry level to intermediate oud um, that we're talking about. And there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, options out there. They're not always going to be very good. So factory ouds can be a bit inconsistent, um, but uh, some of them can be very good. Um, I also have my highest recommendation that I'm going to share with you uh, later later in this YouTube live, um, so watch out for that. Um, you know, it's it, it's very scary to order an oud that's a very low uh, low end price. Um, you never you really never know what you're going to get. Um, that's why I have um, picked myself some ouds that I recommend, especially for beginners. The safe the safe choices out there. Um, yeah, so we'll get to that. Um, let's go through some of these uh, factory um, ouds that you could get. So factory ouds, I mean that they're they're larger production. Uh, maybe several people go into making these making these ouds, or maybe they're they're just made faster. Um, now I don't know if all of these uh, ouds are for sure what the you know if they're particularly made in a mass you know f factory uh, kind of thing but uh, first company that I want to talk about is uh, Gauharit Alfan Ouds um, these Ouds not would they would not be my first choice um, for Ouds and I'm going to share my screen here so you can see Okay. Darbuka Planet sells um, sells these ouds too. Arab Instruments also sells these sell these oud. Um, they wouldn't be my first choice. Let's see if I can find these. Where did they go? All right. So Gaurhad El Fan Beginners Egyptian Oud model number two. You know, very cheap, very low price. Um, the problem with these ouds is you never know how long they'll last. Um, again, with the pegs too, that's a problem with the uh, with these kind of instruments. You never know the pegs might not be so great. Um, and so it, it's always a risk, you know, buying these kind of woods because you never really know uh, what what you know they're going to be like exactly. But if you know that's the if that's the price that you can that you can afford, then it might be a good a good start. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't personally go for a Gauharet El Fan, you know, oud. Um, that wouldn't be my first choice uh, for a lower priced oud. Um, another oud that you could go for, Sadatin Sandi. Um, these ouds, 
uh, not the cheapest ouds, but they're solid. They're really, they're really solid, very consistent. I think they're a good starter oud. Um, more of the Turkish vein. They do make Arabic um, ouds too, but uh, they're probably going to have a heavy Turkish accent. Um, you know, that's in the who are, that depends on the listener and you know all that. Um, they're great. Uh, they're great beginner ouds. Let's see this one here. What is this? Uh, Turkish oud. This one looks to be sold by someone privately. Um, another lower price oud that you could get is from Sala Music. Um, you know, three ninety nine, not bad price. Um, these ouds, they they also make them Turkish and Arabic. Um, the Arabic ouds are usually like 60 centimeters from the bridge to the nut. Um, these are not a bad choice as well um, for getting into the oud. Uh, likely the, the workmanship and the craftsmanship is consistent. Um, uh, but uh, one of the things about uh, some of the ouds that Salam Music uh, has is that some of the, and a lot of the Turkish makers, um, they make ouds with plastic bridges. Um, and this is not what I would recommend either uh, for, long for an instrument that you want to use for uh, a longer period of time you got to watch out for the plastic bridges. And so if you ever are considering, um, you know, these kind of ouds, these lower priced ouds from Turkey, um, ask about the plastic bridge. Um, don't get caught with a plastic bridge uh, if you, you know, are looking for something that's a bit more longer lasting. Um, so, you know, I don't know. Look for that. That's what I'm saying. I don't know exactly what models have the plastic bridge, but I do know that, some lower models, especially ouds under four hundred dollars, they're going to have plastic bridges, um, most likely, more likely than not. Um, so yeah, watch out for that. Um, but Salam Music is a pretty consistent, good company to buy from. Another uh, company that's making pretty decent ouds is Zeryab, of course. Zeryab, I have a Zeryab oud too. Let's look that up here. A lot of companies are selling their Yabuds. They're pretty consistent. Um, but one of the problems with the Zer Yabuds is that they're made super fast. You know, the, uh, except for the higher, the more uh, higher priced models. Um, they're made very quickly. So some of the details uh, are, are not there, are not 100%. Um, like, for example, um, I bought this Zer Yabud. I bought this one from uh, Morris Oud Shop. Great, another good source of getting ouds. Um, but the problem was um, the nut. The nut was very rough. Now, so it was really high. Like the like, why would you make an oud with a high nut like that? Like it was hard to press down some of the strings. The action was okay. The action is still okay on this oud, but. I had to go to the trouble to sand down this nut. Now, I don't want you guys, I don't want, you know, my oud students or anyone else out there who's taking my advice to, to get an oud um, that is not going to be easy to play. Like, it was, it was a bit, it was really annoying. At, after a few days, I was like, I've got to do something about this, this nut. And I, so I sanded it down myself. And I don't want, you know, you guys doing that. Somebody who's just... Uh, picking up the oud for the first time shouldn't be doing that. Anyway, I had to take about a good millimeter down uh, this this nut, and now now it's acceptable. Now it's good. It's not a professional job. I'm not a luthier or anything, but um, you know I did a fine enough job. I took my time, and now it's quite playable. It could go down a little bit more, but it's it's fine now. Um, so that's one of the drawbacks of some of these factory ouds. Sometimes the details are not there. Um, and uh, so in my recommendation for ouds, uh, I want to suggest you the ouds that you can buy that you don't have to worry about these things. They are lower price ouds made in factories, but the care has been taken. The love went into making this, these ouds. And so uh, continue watching uh, for my recommendation of, of where you can get uh, a lower price oud that is ready to play, 
the pegs fit and the nut is made to the right shape there's no plastic parts um, so watch out for that I'll be talking about that later and uh, for now I'm just gonna go into um, comments see if there's anything I need to address here Uh, plastic pigs yeah that's a good question that's another thing plastic pigs Turkish uh, cheaper Turkish ouds also use plastic pigs um, they actually don't work that too badly um, so it's uh, it's not a bad option uh, sorry about that yeah I forgot to take the screen down uh, to show you the, the Zeryab oud um, but you guys have seen it before I'm sure anyway, this guy here um, so yeah, plastic pegs, plastic bridge. Plastic pegs are not that bad. They're okay. They do the job. Um, I've had a student uh, that had plastic pegs, and I was using the oud, checking it out, and tuning it every every lesson for him. Um, and uh, they worked fine. They're okay. They did the job. But And I'm sure the plastic bridge does the job too. But like, if you're going to pay uh, $700, or, or if you're going to pay more than $500 for an oud, like I wouldn't want a plastic bridge on the oud, so uh, always ask about plastic bridges. Um, that's important. Okay, next. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, Zeryab. Okay, so we were talking about Zeryab. Let's see what who else we can talk about. We can talk a little bit about um, Morris ouds. Um, I mentioned that I bought my Zeryab oud from Morris oud shop. Let me show you this here. These ouds are also very decent. Um, some of these Morris uh, ouds, they're a good price. You know, around a thousand dollars for um, a pretty good oud. Um, looks like they use ebony or rosewood for the fingerboard. Um, pretty consistent there too, uh, not bad value. Um, now they also have Morris uh, Shahata also makes uh, apprentice ouds. I think these ones, if you wanted to compare them, they're comparable to Zeryab in quality. Um, I haven't played one myself, but I've heard reviews from other people who have repaired them um, or uh, had them. Um, not bad ouds as well to get started. Um, probably a safe bet, but uh, not, yeah. I uh, have another recommendation for you that I would prefer you look into. Um, Morris Oud Shop, great customer service. Um, Mike, uh, who's uh, who's managing that, uh, great does a great job. Um, great customer service. Like I said, I bought an Oud from him um, as well. Uh, great, great place to buy Ouds. All uh, right, let's see here. Take this off. All right, let's see. Who else? Okay, now we're going to get into uh, more luthier-made ouds. So ouds that are made... So these are ouds that we're talking um, over $1,000, right? So first of all, um, I'll be sending you recommendation of the ouds that I recommend that are under $1,000. That you don't have to worry about uh, repairing it. Don't have to worry about um, the pegs not fitting properly or getting stuck. Um, you don't have to worry about plastic pieces. And these ouds are between four hundred dollars to you know eight hundred dollars. They're great for professionals and people who are starting out. I'm gonna send you that uh, that link soon of a factory that I highly recommend myself. And um, we'll talk about that later. But right now I want to talk about uh, some. Oud makers, let's look. Nazigadban. Nazigadban is making some cool ouds, very beautiful designs. Uh, let's see his ouds here. I like these ouds myself. They're gorgeous. Let's see, where are his models? beautiful he's got all the specifications here it's really nice um, to see that next look look at the next oud 
So I don't know the price point of these ouds myself. I've never inquired from him, um, but they're definitely between, uh, they're probably, they're well over a $1,000. Um, but uh, you're getting a long lasting oud, I'm sure. Um, people, lots of people have bought ouds from him. They're beautiful, they're made custom. This is gorgeous, um, quite a nice oud here. And this is an oud that I personally would buy, you know, it, uh, I would be interested to have and to hold one of these ouds to put in my collection if that were something that I would be doing. That I would be doing. Let's hear what this sounds like. So about um, oud videos that you see online, especially um, newly built ouds, they're all going to have a bit of a extra brightness to them. Uh, that's just going to be part of the oud. You've got to let an oud get broken into before you really hear what it's going to sound like. So a lot of these videos that you see, um, sound files on of ouds, they're not exactly what the oud's going to sound like in the end. So um, you have to keep that in mind when you're you're looking at different ouds. Um, they're all they after a while they sound different. So, if, like for example, you might be able to get a really nice sound out of a lower priced oud. After time, after it breaks in, if you play it well, if you play it really nicely, um, it starts to warm up. It, um, it loses that uh, that new that new sound, uh, that bright buzziness. So you, you got to let an oud, uh, you know, sit and uh, get broken in. Uh, so a lot of the new ouds that you see, whether they're made by professionals or uh, if they're lower than a $1,000, um, these ouds are going to be uh, sounding a little bit more buzzy at first. All right, let's get back. So that's Nazi Gadban in Lebanon. What else we got here? Ibrahim Ada, another Turkish um, maker. I don't know too much of his about his ouds, um, but it looks like a reputable maker. Uh, you can see his Instagram here. They look quite nice. This would be an oud that I would be interested to. To look into myself as well beautiful beautiful work Ibrahim Ada in Turkey all right how about so this is another one of my uh, favorite uh, ouds um, Khaled Belhaiba in uh, Morocco I made the ouds for uh, you know Sage Shrebi those guys uh, let's see what here we got Grammarly helps make your writing wonderful all right let's mute that So, this, this sound is just amazing to me. Uh, one of the most unique oud sounds uh, that I've heard myself is these Belhaiba North African ouds. make like comment about the power that you hear that you hear very dense you just hear the notes pure notes right of course this uh, video quality is not that great but uh, you can hear this all over the place you know Sage Shrebi is playing uh, these ouds this is a this is a magnificent oud to, in my in my opinion I would love to get my own, my hands on um, an oud like this uh, so that's uh, Khaled Belhaiba um, uh, played by another um, oud player here. Let's see here. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's go to another oud that I'm interested in, Peter Sayer in Palestine, Israel. Um, Nazar Rohana plays his oud. Brian Prunka in New York plays an oud by him. Um, his ouds are in high demand.
These ouds are classic. Like, this is a classic oud. The downside to ordering uh, oud from a luthier like this is that uh, it's gonna, you have to be patient buying the oud because uh, it takes some time. They have a back orders, you know, that they have to get to. Um, I know if, uh, one of my students is getting an oud made by Kaveh Gorbanzadeh in Iran and, you know, it's not going to be prepared and it's not going to be available for another six months just because these luthiers are making them handmade one by one, basically, or maybe a couple ouds at the same time. They're putting a lot of love and care into these instruments, and so it takes time for them to make it. Um, that brings me to um, oud makers like Farouk Turuns, which is making, you know, high-quality ouds, but, um, you know, he's also employed other people. Uh, to work in the factory. It's not just one guy making the oud, it's multiple people making the oud to very high quality. Um, that goes the same for like uh, Yildir in Palabiak ouds. It's not just Yildir making the oud, it's other workmen who they, you know, they've hired to work as a team to create you know, high quality ouds. So Farouk Turuns, let's check him out. Um, Farouk Turuns makes, uh, makes some special ouds with double soundboard. Um, that's a unique quality of his ouds, and he uses a material, a special material in there. Um, he makes Arabic models as well as Turkish models. This is the typical Turkish sound that you're hearing right now. Um, and uh, so Farouk Tarun's he also makes lower priced models, which I've heard are very good as well. Um, you know, just as good as the, the higher, more expensive models. But the price point for these ouds is, is much higher. So we're talking, I think his lower priced models are, you know, about $1,500. And then the sky's the limit in terms of his ouds. They are very ornate, some of them, um, and they fetch a very high price. Some of them are double so soundboard. You can also get a single traditional soundboard. Uh, so that's Farouk Tarun's. Um, and yeah, so let's uh, go back to the comments. So we have a comment about uh, Naziga Gaiban's ouds are over 3,000. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, yeah, good question about carbon ouds. Uh, so a friend of mine, Philip Shaheen in Palestine, Israel, he's uh, making carbon fiber ouds. Let's find uh, carbon fiber oud. Okay, have a listen to this. I've actually played one of um, Philip's uh, carbon fiber ouds. Uh, really nice. Awesome. Awesome instrument. Um, he has his own uh, unique... Uh, bridge configuration as well, um, which is very cool. Um, can't talk about that, but because um, I don't know much about it. But um, his ouds are were fantastic, at least from what I played and I heard. Um, very nice, very well built, fantastic. Um, so carbon fiber ouds are good; they do the job. You see, most of the sound of the wood is being made in the soundboard from what I've been told and what I've read uh, from other oud makers. Well, it's all mostly, you know, in the soundboard. That's where the sound is being created. Um, the, the, the bowl is just, is just, uh, is really just bouncing the sound back and out. Um, so that's why, you know, I, I don't care so much about what oud, what wood is made uh, to use in the bowl. 
uh, I don't really care so much about that. I'm not so much of a stickler. What I care about is the wood of the soundboard and the care that's been taken into making the soundboard. Uh, that's the most important factor for me. Um, other than that, I think it's really just aesthetics. Um, but some woods are lighter than other woods, and so that goes into um, the woods that are used. Some, may, may you could argue, are uh, louder wood as well. Um, when I got my Dimitri Rapacusius oud made back in 2007, I asked him to make a, as loud as an oud as he could um, because I've really wanted a, a nice loud sound. So he built an oud uh, like with rosewood um, and uh, I can't remember the other wood. I think it was um, I think it was walnut or rosewood and uh, polysander. Uh, polysander, I think, is a is a type of rosewood, um, but but yeah, um, beautiful oud. I really miss it, and I really want to get my hands back on it. Right now, it's back in Canada with my folks, uh, so I haven't played it in a while. Um, let's look at uh, Dimitri Apicusius's ouds. You can check out uh, Dimitri's um, YouTube channel. I'll show it to you right here. Just the search Dimitri Rapakusius Oud, you'll find his uh, YouTube channel Rapak Udi and uh, you'll see all his cool videos. He's making so many Ouds, like it's, it's insane. Um, and so many different configurations too. To be honest, if I were to commission commission another Oud, like I really like Dimitri's Ouds, but the biggest thing is I really enjoy his aesthetic. His ouds are not like out of this world ornate, and they're they just have a great balance of aesthetic. So that's why I really like Dimitri's ouds. Let's uh, take a listen here. This is a Turkish oud. Now you'll notice that uh, all his ouds, when they're filmed like this, they're brand new, so they sound super bright and uh, and a bit buzzy, right? Um, but after a while, they just they get a nice, warm, thick, punchy, good tone. Um, you can see, of course, my Dimitri Oud on uh, on my YouTube channel. But check out Dimitri's Ouds. Um, I I just I'm a big fan of Dimitri's Ouds. Uh, they they're built like tanks. These Ouds as well. Uh, very very nice craftsmanship. My Oud has been through. A lot of bumps and, and stuff, and and it's the action hasn't changed. Even though the soundboard cracked because of the cold, um, I slipped on some ice one time and uh, fell on the oud actually, and so the it's the actual uh, the bowl got split, um, you know, by falling on it. But even though that those two things happened to this oud. The action didn't change, and the oud still sound uh, sounded fine. I got it repaired later. Later, but um, yeah, the great craftsmanship built like a tank. These are ouds that I can guarantee you from my personal experience that they last. These ouds are going to be are gonna last forever. <laughs> you know that's what I think anyway. Uh, so that's why I really like uh, the craftsmanship of this builder. Um, I about the sound. The sound is a bit is a bit rough and raw, you know, in these videos that he shows. But if you look at uh, other people's videos who have held on to these ouds longer, they really start to mature, I think. And uh, so that's my experience with my particular oud from Dimitri. Um, that's why I love this uh, this maker as well. And I want to show you something cool here now. Uh, found this video just the other day um, of a Persian barbat with a skin top after 30 days i couldn't all right let's check this out
I'd personally love to have one of these ouds just for fun. Um, again, longer neck on the barbats here. Um, this design is a floating bridge with a piece of wood on the skin membrane. And a uh, sound hole here, a bit smaller body. Um, there's probably going to be a bit more of an echo, a bit more of a resonance with these ouds, and a little bit more of this kind of percussive, this, uh, this percussiveness that I hear uh, coming from these. And really nice. I, 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 this would be a cool instrument to have. Um, but uh, very hard to get. I don't even know who's making these right now in Iran, if anybody is. Um, but a cool concept and a purely Iranian concept it makes a lot of sense for Iranian instruments. Most uh, Iranian instruments are have a skin membrane on it, and so it's a cool design, cool option. All right, what else we got here? Okay, so what I wanted to do now. Oh yeah, I wanted. I don't want to forget John Vergara. John Vergara is doing some great work these these days. Um, very cool ouds. Uh, these are all very high quality premium prices here we're talking. Uh, let's check out uh, this lower priced oud he's got. Uh, oh, it looks like he's sold one of them. Um, this is this Karnak oud, three grand. Check out the video on here. beautiful very nice uh, classic I, he's going for a classic sound classic uh, you know uh, maybe kind of like Syrian kind of style uh, sound and um, if you take a look this is really nice uh, I've heard good things about very wide grain wood um, I've heard good things about the sound that these wide grain wood wood can can provide to ouds so you know he's selecting these these woods very very carefully as all luthiers do. Um, very nice, very nice oud, very nice sound. Um, very sounds very balanced. Um, he recently made a manol style oud as well. Um, and check out uh, this this oud here, this one Najma. This one's crazy, and and look at the player here, Najib Shaheen, playing this oud for you. I can hear the projection from here. Like I just feel like, um, like this oud is just really got a lot of character, and um, really cool uh, choice of the fingerboard here. This uh, material of the fingerboard may change the sound a little bit as opposed to wood, um, but you know you'd have to see it and hear it in person. Amazing oud, this one. It does sound as though it needs to be broken into a little bit. Uh, and so, yeah, it's going to sound just amazing. Uh, yeah, I like it. And check out that video. Check out John Vergara's work. Um, Peter Sayach here. Yeah, his website looks like it's uh, under construction. Uh, making sure you can see that. Uh, but if you want to hear more, Nizar Rohana is using his ouds for all his recordings and whatnot. All right, so right now what I want to do, before I give you my recommendation of, of oud that you can, you know, buy for under $1,000 that uh, you won't have any trouble with, or uh, they're trustworthy and reliable, um, I want to go through eBay and just, like, have some fun, uh, look at ouds, um, and, you know, I'll tell you which one I would buy, which one I would not buy, <laughs> uh, just so you get an idea of what I think. This oud... This might be okay. Okay, this oud. Stay away from this oud. This oud already looks uh, looks suspicious to me. Okay, and every time you see this this um, this uh, kind of design, you can see that the soundboard has clearly been made out of 
different types of wood. They've put it all together. That's normal with ouds. Oud soundboards are made with different uh, different pieces of wood. That's normal. But this is clearly a lower grade. Like you know, the colors are different. No care has been going into making that. Uh, uh, you can see with the wood material of the bridge, uh, looks like just the poor quality wood. You know, this is an oud that I would not buy. I would not go near near it with three hundred dollars. No way. Uh, you can get save up another eighty dollars and buy a decent oud that you can. I have a recommendation for you that you can be safe and well assured. I would not. I would stay away from this oud. Uh, let's see what else here. Okay, perfume not our thing. Turkish oud quality handmade oud from Turkey. This looks interesting. All right, look at the look at the bridge there interesting design the bridge could be wood it could be plastic it looks like it could be wood actually just the, by the way it's carved um, but you can tell right away it, it's cheaper oud there's wood there's glue coming out of the edges of the bridge there you know um, heavy gloss on the wood different wood used here so yeah definitely lower quality um, you know saving time and money looks like let's look at the pegs a bit closer the pegs appear to fit ah these are plastic pegs you can tell by the little lines on the pegs there um, those are molded you know they're molded by plastic so these are plastic pegs uh, the nut looks okay uh, so yeah this might be an oud that's worth its price it might uh, be playable Hard to know without the action, without seeing the action. But the action looks pretty low. Um, a lot. One thing about Turkish ouds is they tend to have, be unfinished, so no, uh, no polish on the soundboard, uh, especially in the cheaper models. You don't want to mess with that. So don't polish the oud, or else the sound is going to change. You want to let your natural oils from your arm, your sweat. You want to get that into the into the soundboard and discolor it and let it oxidize by itself and it will uh, mature nicely that way um, but this looks like a nice piece of wood on the soundboard I don't know I'm not an expert on these things but uh, this might be a safe oud to go with might be okay let's see here this looks like sala music yep cheer music Sala music, same thing, I think. Um, these ouds look pretty safe. I know people who, students who have bought these ouds. Um, pretty safe ouds, they'll last you for a while. Um, but they, you won't get an Arabic sound on them uh, if you're looking for an Arabic sound. Uh, you might get a plastic bridge. I don't know. You'd have to confirm with the seller about that. Let's go through some more ouds here. Okay, I'm gonna change up the uh, search term instrument here. I'll go to other string instruments. Okay, Zeryab Oud. This looks promising too. Um, prices in euro, I don't know, a bit more expensive. The price is around the right range. It looks like it's used, though. Um, yeah, these woods again. These woods are pretty safe to buy, but you may they may not be set up very nicely. Uh, so that's a consideration that you have to go into. Let's see if we can find some more. Okay, what is this here? Sixty-three dollars. What? What is this? Oudprof. That's interesting. Okay, Oudprof sells some really nice ouds most of the time. Uh, the volume pricing. Okay, so this is um, this is something interesting that I haven't seen before. Um, 
maybe this is more in bulk maybe he, these are lower end ouds that uh, he's maybe selling in more on mass not sure never seen this before it looks looks interesting to say the least and oud prof, oud prof has been selling ouds for a long time well, let's look at this one I would not I would likely not go near this oud. Uh looks risky. The you can tell the there's a lack of intricacy with the rosettes and the the uh woodwork here. So likely a cheaper cheaper oud. Bridge again looks it's hard to say. Looks like a cheaper wood. Let's look at the pegs. Uh you never know what you're going to get with this. Uh, the bridge is non-existent. Yeah, stay away from this oud. I don't know what this is. This is a wall hanger. And now I'm getting the idea that this is a wall hanger. You don't want to buy this oud. Let's keep going. Okay, I'm going to change the... Um, I don't use eBay, so I'm kind of going all over the place here looking for a uh, way to change the prices here. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, now we're just going to get ouds, I think. Okay, this one's interesting. What's this one? Okay, this appears to be... Could be... Uh, Shahata Apprentice Oud, maybe. Looks okay. Looks like there's some polish on the soundboard. Nice bowl, looks like. Okay, looks interesting. Price is low. Okay, you can see a little bit of the action here. This looks like a potential bargain, maybe. But the action does look a little high there. Yeah, interesting oud. Interesting. I might ask the seller for, you know, some information about where it came from um, or like uh, how's the action, the playability, how long have you had it. This might, this is an interesting one. So that's a possibility. Let's keep going. Okay, these Heartland Arabic Ouds and Turkish Ouds. These, I don't know who they're made by, but they're made in Turkey and they're made Arabic uh, specifications, I think. Turkish specifications. They're a lower quality oud. Um, I've seen a bunch of people with these ouds. Um, yeah, lower quality, but they use, at least they use a wood bridge. That's nice. Uh, not a plastic bridge, but they'll do the job for a few years. I don't think you'll run into too many problems with these ouds. From what I've seen from students I've had that have played these ouds, the price is about right. Um, okay, but so now what I want to do is answer any questions and I want to give you my recommendation for for ouds. Um, so go to this web page here. I'm teaming up with Ethnic Musical, this company here, Ethnic Musical. Um, they work with they work directly with uh, with uh, oud makers in Turkey to cater to this uh, lower uh, this uh, lower priced market to give somebody an oud that they can just take out of the box tune it up and play um, and I handpicked these based on my tastes and preferences uh, these are the options that I recommend entry level Syrian style oud. For three ninety nine, excellent price, made out of walnut. Um, you've got ebony pegs on it. 
you've got a blue, you've got a brown walnut bowl. This says black here. I've got to change that. Um, spruce soundboard, uh, 60 centimeters. This is a great length for Arabic ouds. Um, a lot of people are liking the 60 centimeters for the type of string sets that are available for Arabic ouds. Um, 60 centimeters hits all the you know all the buttons right. Um, you can put any Arabic string set on here and you'll be pretty good to go. No, no, it, no worries really. Uh, so it's good for Arabic sound as well as string tension, and it's uh, you know not too too long of a neck, so it'll be playable as well. Um, so the the what I like about what this company is doing is that they're making sure that the details are are handled. You know, no plastic bridges. These pl these bridges are made out of wood. Um, good quality fingerboard, eb um, ebony or rosewood fingerboards. Um, they also have another. Some ouds are made out of a material called Vespa, which is um, like a it's like a paper pulp mixed with uh, epoxy and this is an excellent material for a fingerboard because it's extra durable and won't affect the sound um, epoxy fingerboards are common in guitars uh, fretless guitars uh, fretless uh, electric bass guitars so epoxy is a great a great finish for a fingerboard extremely durable and another thing the pegs are hand fitted so uh, you're not going to have any problems with the pegs. That's what I love about this company. Here's another option for entry level classic walnut Arabic oud. Walnut is the classic uh, uh, material to make ouds, the bowl. Um, and uh, this one, I believe, is a, is a spruce soundboard again. Nice quality soundboard. So... Uh, the 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 reason why these the prices are low probably the the quality of the woods is not you know the highest grade but still going to be a nice solid grade um, again the nut is going to be a nice quality nut fitted for the strings um, and again fitted ebony uh, pegs for easy tuning so the, what they what they want to do uh, with their ouds is they want you to get an oud that you can just take out of the box, tune it up, and it's ready to go. So they've set it up for you. They put on uh, pyramid uh, strings, uh, this uh, model 650-11. They put on this uh, set of pyramid strings right on the oud. They've set it up so the nut fits the, the strings, and so everything is set up ready to go. That's a nice feature. And if you have a little bit of extra cash, if you want to get something that you can that will last you for at least 5 to 10 years, of an oud, um, you can get this intermediate slash professional level Arabic oud, with, and I added the term Turkish sophistication because you get the Turkish sophistication in the Turkish craftsmanship. I really highly believe that uh, Turkish sounds of ouds um, are a bit more sophisticated sound, um, and there's a little bit more resonance, a little bit more echo. Um, there's going to be a nice quality sound in there. Again, this one is a nice one because you've got a uh, Canadian cedar soundboard for mature, warm sound. It's true. Um, I prefer cedar soundboards uh, myself. A bit. It's going to be a higher quality wood, a higher grade as well. And you've got the Kirshner Premium strings on there. Um, and you've got a perfectly fitted bone nut. This is excellent. Bone nuts are really nice for these ouds. Um, so you can go to this website here. I'm going to put it in the comments and I'm going to answer some questions. Yeah. So if you go, uh, I'm going to be adding, I'm going to be adding, um, I'm going to be adding sound files to this page as well. Uh, but there are sound files for, um, for these ouds on their website. Um, but I recommend purchasing um, from this if you're looking for. Um, I'm going to be adding some deal, some deals um, for the Christmas. I'm going to be adding some oud lessons in there, bundled in with the price of these ouds that you can buy. So if you buy it from my site, um, you get the added benefit of oud lessons. Um, I'm thinking of, um, I'm thinking of uh, throwing in some oud lessons with these with the price of these ouds so that you can get going um, but i haven't uh, worked out the details yet
but I'll, if uh, I do have any plans uh, for that, I'll be adding them to this page. Um, the nice thing, another thing about uh, their OODs is they have an easy return policy, um, at least uh, as if you if you match these conditions, um, you can return the OOD if you're not happy with it. Um, also, free worldwide shipping is included um, in the price, so that's really nice too. Very quick shipping. Um, I, uh, I hope to get one of these ouds in my hands too. I got to get rid of some, make some space in my apartment for, for another oud, and then uh, hopefully I'll be um, be able to demonstrate one of these ouds for you in person. Um, so yeah, so these ouds are great. Uh, they come with a soft case. Uh, this oud in particular is African paduk and mahogany. Um, again, 60 centimeters for an Arabic style oud. So those are the ouds that I recommend for somebody who is beginning on the oud, doesn't want to think too much about buying an oud, um, and wants to just get started. Uh, those are the ouds that I recommend for anyone just getting into it. Good prices, and I think personally that they're the best oud that you can get at the price. And uh, they put a lot of hard work. They're working directly with the with the makers in the factory that they have, um, and so they're making it specifically for Arabic tastes. They're doing their research. Um, they're trying their best to get the authentic uh, authentic oud Arabic oud sound for these ouds. And they also do uh, Turkish ouds as well with the true Turkish sound, uh, Turkish scale as well. Um, I'm really excited about this this company and this uh, what the ouds that they're providing. Um, so yeah, you you can also buy these ouds through me because we're working together. And uh, so go to this website and check it out there. And they have a YouTube channel. Yes, um, yeah. So I'm right now. I'm going to answer any questions you have. Uh, so let me know whatever questions you have about the about these ouds. Um, I'm going to check the comments now and see what we can talk about. Well, uh, uh, for you who's having sh a shoulder operation, um, good luck. I uh, hope everything goes well with that. Um, yeah, the Barbat is like a Oud and a Robob hybrid. Yeah, good observation. It does sound a little bit like that too. Um, I've never tried Mahmoud Daher Ouds, but to be honest, um, I do have a contact who purchased an Oud from... Uh, Mahmoud Dagher and uh, he wasn't so satisfied with the customer service um, he says that in the end the oud was nice but uh, uh, he had some uh, he, he wasn't completely satisfied with his experience with Mah Mah Mahmoud Dagher I don't know I can't go into too much detail as it was a long time ago I still have the email I could look if you're interested I could look into that but um, yeah Mahmoud Dagher his ouds look nice they lo look really nice Okay, I purchased a new from Amazon for three forty-five. It has great volume and really nice sound. Um, yeah, there there are some ouds that you can get at a good price uh, from Amazon and whatnot. But yeah, they're always a risk. So if you don't want to risk it, then you know there's uh, take my recommendations. Um, and you know, if in the end, if you're not happy with those ouds, you can always return it uh, hassle-free. Uh, yes. A recording King Bell Brass Swamp Dog Resonator guitar has a nice oud like tone for playing Arabic music. Yeah, that's a cool thing. Uh yeah, I'm not in BC anymore. I'm in I'm in I live in Japan these days. Um that's another story for another time. Um I haven't played uh a Morris Shahata oud, though I ha I have a student who bought a, a floating bridge uh Shahada oud and he loves it. He bought it from Morris Oud Shop. Um, he really likes the oud, but it's uh, over a thousand dollars. I don't know how much exactly he bought it for. Uh, he really likes the sound. I like the sound. F I'm teaching him over Skype, uh, and he really likes the oud. Yeah, it sounds good. He likes it uh, more than his other oud that he bought uh, from another company. Um, uh, he bought. Uh, he, I think he bought. A more intermediate level oud from uh, uh, sultaninstruments.com 
and uh, he's using that now for uh, Turkish tuning and uh, he's keeping the the more Shahada Oud in uh, Arabic tuning yeah Um, I think I do have a video about left hand and right hand uh, positions. Uh, this month I will be doing a beginner's um, a beginner's uh, uh, oud lesson uh, on live on YouTube. Um, so uh, we'll be we'll be talking a little bit about left hand right hand positions about that and uh, changing position. I also this month I also want to get on Patreon and maybe do something. Uh, subscription-based oud lessons for especially for people who are starting right out of right bare beginner stuff on the oud um, and showing some exercises that you can do to develop the left hand right hand uh, and also first hand second position first position second position switching between those things um, yeah actually earlier in the video I did talk about uh, Morris apprentice ouds um, they're pretty safe um, yeah, uh, they're pretty safe. I do know some people are pretty happy with them. Um, they're probably comparable to Zeryab Ouds in quality and sound and whatnot. Um, Canadian Electric Oud. Uh, are you talking about the Godin, Godin Electric Oud? The Godin uh, sounds really nice. When you talk about the Godin Oud. Okay, I actually have a, a cool video that I got to find. Uh, just give me a moment. I can show you a really bad example of the Godan Oud. I just want to, want to find you that because I think it's worth addressing. Like you can't address you can't play an electric oud the same way as you play an acoustic oud. You can't. It's just uh not not gonna be the same. So just give me a minute here I'm gonna find that for you. Find this video. Uh, River Song Oud's uh, River Song Guitars in Canada also makes an electric oud. They made it in uh, in collaboration with Philip Shaheen. I I have a video of that. I played the instrument. That's a really cool instrument too. Okay, I'm gonna find you this oud of this multi oud. Um, it's pl the multi oud is played exceptionally well, but the sound. I don't know about that. So just one second here. Let me find this. So for now, uh, listen to some music that I played, that I've recorded. that I wanted to show you uh, live stream festival dancing strings festival held in Europe um, great lineup they had here some talented oud players um, one guy played a multi oud on this and he plays it beautifully he's got a great North African um, style of playing beautiful but the sound I'm not so excited about let's find it He's like, okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. 
beautiful plane. I really like the high range on the multi -wood. I think it sounds great. But I think as far as an electric wood goes, you have to put effects on it. Because otherwise, like the low end just sounds like a toy, to be honest. You know, this is... I, I would have loved to hear this playing on, a, on an acoustic oud. So, what I would like to see is more electric guitar... electric oud players adding nice effects to their ouds. Nice... Um, you know, nice effects that uh, that guitar players use to make their their instruments sound better. I think that's the way to go. Um, great player, beautiful playing, but uh, I wouldn't have brought uh, multi oud on stage to play it like an acoustic oud. All right. What's your recommendation for an Arabic electric oud? Um, that's a good question. Le electric ouds. I'm not such a big fan. Okay, if you want my uh, honest opinion, the way to go for an electric oud is more like an electric guitar. Now, I'll bring up something else for you to show you. Um, nobody's doing this. I don't know why anyone's, why people are not doing this more. So, someone I follow on Instagram in Europe, um, his Instagram is called the Oud Dude and he plays really nice really excellently uh, this guy here uh, Amine Merahi and so he's playing some fretless electric guitars but he's also got uh, a fretless electric Oud made check this out It's a shorter scale. It's fretless. It's the scale length of an oud. It looks kind of like an oud. And the effects are awesome. Like that is what an electric oud should be in my opinion. That's what I say, you know, that's the way it should, should be. Um, so yeah, check out his, um, check out the Oud Dude and check out his videos. You can see some more of his uh, cool stuff he's got there. He also plays electric, uh, acoustic Ouds. Um, yeah, so check that out. That's my opinion of the electric Oud and that's the direction they should take with electric Ouds. Go full on electric. All right, so that's about the time that I have. Um, I'll answer any last minute questions we have here. Um, yeah, so in in my foundation program course, um, it does cover the first position, second position, and has some exercises that specifically show you, you know, how what you got to do, changing from first position to second position and back. Um, does cover that in there, um, and in the foundation program as well. Uh, well, not in the foundation program per se, 
what I'm trying to say is that in oud playing itself, um, it's all about when you make the decision to change to to first position, to second position, and back and forth. It's when you make the decision. There's so many options you have to make the decision of when to move and which finger to move with. Um, so there's always uh, you can there's always a variety of correctness in playing oud, um, but it's about consistency and sticking to you know, what makes sense for you you know, in playing the oud, but yeah, that is covered in the foundation program. What do you think about Indian rugs on oud? Sure, why not? Um, I think some people are already doing that. Um, yeah. All right, so if there's uh, no more questions about uh, about this, about oud makers, um, do check out this if you're interested in buying uh, an oud that you don't want to think too much about uh, worrying about it, you want to stay safe, here's the link again that you can check out. Go to that link. Um, tomorrow I'm going to be talking more about uh, the Oud stuff. Uh, tomorrow what am I talking about? Let me find out here. Tomorrow... Tomorrow I will see, maybe, maybe I'll talk about how to buy an Oud in a foreign country. Um, or we'll talk about oud strings, oud picks, that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right. One more question came through. Um, I see a lot of people, when they get to the high soul string, they switch to second hand position. Should I stay in first position, like playing C major, or switch to second when I get to soul? Uh, yeah. So it's up to you. It really depends on where you're going. So when, here, let me uh, quickly go through this because it is an important thing. So, when you start out, so here's first position, starting C major, then second position, I've moved my index finger up to A. And the reason I go to second position is because if I want to go up higher, then I need to be in that second position, especially if I'm going to use my pinky to hit F. Then, when I go down, I'm just going to stay in second position. Or, I'll change to first position, and you play C with my third finger, because maybe I want to do a modulation or something. I don't know. So that's uh, one option. Like, uh, I often start uh, the C major in my second position and then change when I need to. Um, let's say if I'm in second position, I'll change the second position there and then I may stay in, se in uh, sorry, I'll stay in, I'll change the first position here and then come back to C major with the first position. You know, or it may, may change. It depends. It depends on where you're going, where you're coming. Yeah, so that's uh, about changing from first position to second position. Again, uh, my program does have exercises to help you help you navigate this. Uh, the notation also has the fingers that you use, and so it, um, it's very clear if you study that program. All right, so without further ado, I'll let you guys go. Have a good day. And, um, yeah, another couple questions. Uh, I suggest using both. Um, yeah, I recommend if you want to mark with sticker or something the, you know, the rough areas of where the notes are, that's a good, good thing to do. I've never really done that myself, and I've never really encouraged my students to do that. I... Uh, teach my students to use their voice to find the note most of the time uh, and to use your ear to find it but it takes some takes some practice but if you need to you know mark where the notes are that's a good option to do too why not all right so uh, we'll see you guys later we'll talk to you tomorrow hopefully uh, some of you can make it off to the live uh, session tomorrow and uh, not sure what time it'll probably be at a, at a later time it'll be more for European uh, folks uh, time zones um, but nevertheless you'll be able to catch the replay uh, and it was fun so see you next time